I'm Kane, your ringmaster, and I'm about to show you the most tear-jerking, eye-watering, eye-stopping, god-dropping theory that you've ever laid your eyes on. All right, Bubble, let's not waste any more time and get right into the show. With Pony and Kane and the dedicated artists to... And the exit, the exit, Is that supposed to happen? Hell, what's supposed to happen anyways? What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Animated Cartoon Conspiracy, where the only way into the circus is through that subscribe button, or by putting on this very experimental headset to view our other theories like the secret of Inkwell Islands or the backstory of the cult classic Only Up, as this is the only way to avoid digital hallucinations. And if you didn't know, there's this whole new series that's been taken to internet by Storm called The Amazing Digital Circus. Its wild success was unprecedented. It made headlines for hitting over 70 million views within the same week, while building a fan of that worships a new clown girl, and while having a cast that seems quite complacent in their situation. Glitch Productions and the creator Gooseworks helped put the focus back on independent animation and stories. Which reminds me, <laughs> I'm developing an animated pitch pipe myself for the series Brockwell of the North Star, so very inspiring. But this new cast of crazy characters has the whole internet frothing at the mouth to try to figure out what exactly is going on in the story. Like, is Kane lying? What is CNA tech? And is there actually a way out of the digital circuit? So make sure you hold on to your hats because this theory is going to be a wild ride. So what exactly is the digital circus? Well, there seems to be an interactive digital game from the early 90s, designed during the rise of games like Purple Place, a game I used to play as a kid, and many others. In this game, it includes the characters Kane, Gangle, Zubal, Kinger, Ragatha, Jax, and Kofmo. And Kofmo being the only one who couldn't make it into the intro. Everything changes when a character who looks sort of like a clown suddenly arrives in the game without warning. And Jax almost immediately asks Kane if this happens to be a new NPC or a new sucker. And Kane, being ecstatic that there's a new character, gives them a tour of the whole place. This is when we see multiple places like the grounds, the void, a place untouched even by Kane, and the exit. But there is no exit. Kane immediately rejects the idea and states it's part of the digital hallucination. A thing that is actually quite real and quite common and if one succumbs to it they will do something called abstraction. Even Jax and Ragatha reassures the audience that the digital hallucinations are definitely part of the game. This is also where we learn that people inducted into the digital circus cannot remember their former selves. Or at least not entirely. So to help them stay sane, Kane gives everyone a new name. To which the clown girl is now named Pomni. So is Kane telling the truth? And if he is, why would he distract from the fact that there may be an exit? But I believe in order to answer that question we must talk about Kofmo, the missing member in the introduction. Kofmo is another clown looking character who wasn't able to make it into the intro like the rest of the cast. After Kane leaves the group to their own adventures, they investigate Kofmo's room, only to find that he's been abstracted into a ghoulish monster with many eyes. Kofmo and his strapped ring attacks Ragatha, but something important happens. She becomes infected by the abstraction. She glitches out. Her speech is broken, and above all, it's painful. And if we think back, abstraction is so common that it's actually happened to many of the characters before. Take a close look at the hallway near Kofmo's room, some with X's and some with mannequins. So what are these rooms with mannequins and X's and do any of them have to do with Kane? The simple answer is yes. See, Pomni spends the entire episode looking for Kane and instead of finding Kane, she finds the exit. You might want to remember that for later, but instead of finding the exit, she finds the void and that's when Kane ends up finding her. And when you know it, he immediately fixes Ragatha and at the same time fixes Pomni's hand from the glitch as well. And what of the mannequins we see on the walls? These are the NPCs that Jax mentioned from the beginning, which we can also find in this restaurant that Kane was in before he found Pomni. Are these events show that Kane finding Pommy, curing Ragatha, and being the one responsible for creating the NPC doesn't mean that Kane is necessarily lying, but he's misguiding them away from the truth of the exit for their own safety. And this is because of the truth behind the headset. Now, the headset is what got them all there in the first place, possibly including Kane. And it's not a headset that acts like Sword Art Online, where the body stays separate from the mind, but it's a headset that transfers a whole being into the digital circus. And we know this because of Kinger when he says that you don't need food anymore. Now, if you're a super sleuth or a fan prior to the release, of the series, you may have seen the promo site glitchprod.com slash the wacky watch. The site is still up and running and features the same watch that acts as Kane's all seeing eye. On this site, we get a handful of information that will help us piece everything together. Not only do we have a person that seems to be dressed the same as Kane in the series, but we also see the commercial promote an experimental chip that may not pass regulation. This not only explains how people get sucked in, but why only some people get sucked in. Let me explain. We are obviously placed in the 90s where computer technology is relatively slow and the internet used to 
same to you. Whilst technologies in the 90s needed more specialized parts to do specific tasks. Take the Nintendo 64 for example. Even though the gaming device was made specifically for gaming, it was amazingly limited for how much it could do. So as more intensive games came out, more games actually came with extra RAM built into it. Nintendo even released booster packs of RAM to increase performance. So for a VR headset to do the same, it would probably need 10x more the processing power to run it. So you can imagine that if hundreds of people buy a headset, a few of these experimental chips may fail. And this also explains why there's so few real people trapped in the game. And old computer technology also explains why Kane crashes and why Pomni and the crew can't remember their original names. They have limited RAM. So as someone who used to be A plus certified and is still a techie, allow me to explain to you computer biology. RAM is the volatile storage of a PC, meaning that once the computer turns off, this memory resets. The memory stored there also is constantly changing, unlike your hard drive. But computers back in the 90s usually only had around four megabytes to 32 megabytes of RAM. Many things gotta be kept small, including their name, which is why characters' names aren't really over five letters, why the NPCs are all reused mannequins, and Kane is seen constantly crashing. But a technique known as compression can also keep everything small, but a common consequence of this is known as digital artifacting, which is when data may have unintended flaws and or alterations. Save that little nugget for later, but I believe our little friends, the Gloinks, may actually be in charge of that department. But even though we've explained how the headsets in the digital world works, what is C and a and is there an exit? CNA is the company that is hinted at to be in charge of everything. We see these letters scrawled across a wall when Pomni attempts to escape through an exit, but not the exit. When we see this, we are confronted with a computer which I believe is not Pomni's, but Kane's. Why would the exit lead to the back rooms of an office building unless this was Kane's memory? C and A. The C must stand for Kane, but as for the A, it may be a previous partner that trapped him in there. And after the company's lead developer was trapped in the digital world forever, he attempted to finish what he could before he slowly descended into madness. Kane, played to wander the digital landscape much like his biblically named counterpart. But Tay, the dedicated artist I hear you asking, if that isn't the exit, but just a door to Kane's memory, what is the real exit? Well, to that I say that the second door we see early in the series is the exit. Upon entering the circus, Pomni sees an exit, but it disappears, this being a red door. This red door is the same that she tried to leave. The same exit that Kane wants everyone to believe is a digital hallucination. But the second door is an orange door, a door in plain sight, a door placed in the middle of the circus for anyone to exit. But Kane being bound to the world is forced only to see illusions that make anyone go crazy, including his own mistake from his past. So he drives everyone away from there, not only to hide his biggest blunder, but to keep everyone sane, knowing the fate of many others that have even tried to look for one. And the only one that can save them is Pomni. And of course, if you like this video, make sure you check out all of the other theories and or gaming videos that you might find on this channel. Why not check out Go Go Hamster Chef? Or maybe even check out the SpongeBob theory about how his family is not really his family. And of course, I'd be down to check out any other indie projects that you may have down in the comments. So of course, I'll see you in another video. Bye-bye.